We just spent 10 nights aboard the world's largest cruise ship, the Icon of the Seas, and this is the good, bad, and ugly. Everybody, what is up? My name is Jordan. And I'm Jared. And this is JJ, JJ Cruz. Cruz. Thank you so much for clicking into the video today. Today we're talking all things Icon of the Seas. This is, of course, the mega ship by Royal Caribbean that just came out. It cost $2 billion to create, and we spent 10 glorious nights aboard this ship. We are going to give you all of the good, all of our bad, and the ugly at the end of the video. So stay tuned because you want to know what you need to prepare for when deciding whether or not to book or sail on the world's biggest cruise ship, Icon of the Seas. Before we get into this, we do just want to invite you to subscribe to the channel. Cruising is all we do here at JJ Cruise, so if you love cruising as much as we do, don't forget to hit that subscribe button, and while you're down there, hit that thumbs up. Now we know there's a lot of questions to be had when it comes to the world's biggest cruise ship, Icon of the Seas. From, is this cruise ship too big? Is it too expensive? Are there too many kids or families around for me to have fun as an adult? Or in general, is this a cruise ship for me? Well, we are gonna answer all of that for you today with our good, our bad, but also just in general, who is this cruise ship for and did we find it worth it overall? We know that when you go on vacation, your money is very important. So ultimately, we wanna answer the question, is this worth your money? Is this trip worth taking all of the kids or your significant other away for a week-long vacation in the Caribbean? And we will share at the end if we think that it was worth it for the two of us. Let's get into the good, and let's start by talking about the stateroom. We did already complete a full stateroom review, actually two stateroom reviews, because <laughs> we did stay in two different cabins during the time we were on board the Icon of the Seas. Both of the cabins were very similar in the fact that they were large, spacious, and bright. And we really liked that about these cabins. One thing, though, that particularly stood out was the new bathroom design, specifically the shower. The showers are so spacious. And the best part is there is additional storage for towels to where you can actually dry off in this glass enclosed shower and not have to get the rest of the bathroom wet when drying off which is normal for most cruise cabins and is something very unique with Icon of the Seas. When it comes to the design of the ship, this is a large open concept ship. Multiple areas like the promenade, Surfside family area, the Central Park area were large and there was this open concept that they went with that we thought was incredible. We see a lot of these new cruise ships that are the biggest in that cruise line's history have very more intimate spaces that are too small for anyone to really enjoy. You really get 20, 30 people in there and then you're completely packed out and you have to find a different venue if you aren't one of those 20 or 30 people. For a majority of these venues on Icon of Seas, that did not happen, which we love to see. You can really enjoy just by being in the promenade, different music, different sounds, different events happening, and you didn't have to feel like you're so claustrophobically in one venue with closed doors behind you. Across all of our 10 nights, we never once felt like there was a particular area that we were in that was overcrowded or that there was too many people in. As a matter of fact, there was multiple times that I would walk around the ship throughout the day and I would wonder, where are the thousands of other people that are on this ship? And that's because the ship provides so many different outlets and areas for people to go. So we love the concept of the ship, the design of the ship, and we think the large open areas really play well to having a lot of people on board. Along with the large open concept design, are ocean views throughout, including the promenade and even a little bit in Central Park. This is something we haven't seen on all other cruise lines and even some of the other classes of ships in Royal Caribbean herself. And this is something that we all travel and cruise to do. We love to see the ocean. We love to see the sunshine or the ocean waves. And this is something that was missing on other class of ships. And we are so pleasantly surprised to see it here on Icon of the Seas in all her glory. One question that we got a lot when we stepped on board was, is the ship too big and is it difficult, especially if you have a hard time walking short distances to get from point A to point B? 
We are really happy to report back that the flow of the ship is well thought out and well designed. It is easy to get from neighborhood to neighborhood, whether that be from elevators, there is an escalator that goes from the casino to the promenade, and truly, you don't have to go long distances between places. You can actually take your time getting across the ship and enjoy a variety of different food, entertainment, both in the forward and the aft. And the ship is just very well thought out when it comes to how you get around. I think a point to add on here as one of our great things, not only the flow of the ship being fantastic and not having to walk so many places or long distances, but also how they're segmented out. For example, families versus adults. This is a common question. Is this gonna be just packed full of kids? Is it really just a family ship? Or is this a place where I can go as an adult and separate myself from kids if I want to and have a good time? The answer is both yes. And that is because a lot of the family segments are the largest that Royal Caribbean has ever provided for families, but they are segmented off from the rest of the ship, which we love seeing. Usually it's always the adults have to be segmented off into one part of the ship. Instead, it's the kids being segmented off to one part of the ship. The back of the ship is where the Surfside family neighborhood exists. That neighborhood has places to eat, specialty restaurants, a bar, a massive splash pad, and also is situated right off of Adventure Ocean. So that entire area towards the back of the ship is really where families and kids could stay all day long. On top of that, Playmakers is right next door, as well as Absolute Zero, which is the ice skating rink. And there is actual kids shows that we'll talk about a little bit later that are in this venue as well. If you go straight up from Surfside, you will go to Category 6 Water Park, another family destination. This is a part of Thrill Island, where you also have mini golf, and you also have that of the Flow Rider. So really, you can stay in the aft of the ship if you have a family with kids and really just go up and down and not have to go to the adult areas of the ship. Not only are the neighborhoods segmented, the pools are also kind of segmented out in terms of what each pool is meant for who. You've got the hideaway pool as well as the gin and tonic swim up pool, which are meant for more adults. The main area pool, the largest pool on the ship, that is meant for families as well as, of course, category six. And then cloud 17 is more of a quiet pool. In that area, of course, there were some kids in there from time to time throughout the week, but that was the pool to just kind of get away from it all if you didn't want the party or the adults only section or the family splash pad down in the Surfside neighborhood. The pools are well thought out on this ship and we love that they each have a purpose. Speaking of the pools, we have to talk and really give kudos to Royal Caribbean for Hideaway. Hideaway is the adults only area of the pool deck and it is gorgeous. With aft-facing views out the back of the ship, you can really see the wake. It's perfect for sail away. These are the prime positions that you want to have for sail away. And it's now reserved for the adults to just sit out there in a pool, enjoy a cocktail or whatever you like to enjoy while just watching us sail away from whatever island destination we may be at. We can't talk about the good without talking about the food. And the main dining room food is the one place people always ask about how is main dining, both in food and in service. Well, we are happy to relay to you that this was one of our best ever main dining room experiences that we've had in any Royal Caribbean ship. The service was exceptional and the food matched that service. Truly was delight every time we went to the main dining room. And this included us being sat at our table. A lot of times with new ships coming into service, you have a long wait because no one knows where the tables are. We never had that. They actually got us seated quickly and efficiently. And we really, really appreciated that. Another area that we loved was the Aqua Dome Market. This is a brand new casual food area with a lot of different options. We did put a full review out. So you can go back on the channel and check that out. But we thought the diversity of food in the Aquadome market was great. We loved that these were additional free or included options in your cruise fare. And several of these places were open until midnight, providing another extra late night food option 
just other than Sorrento. So Aquino Market was fantastic. You have to try feta before it's too late. Try it right away. Another one was the crepe place. That is something people wish they tried earlier on in their cruise. And we're sad when they tried it on the last day. If you've watched the channel for a long time, you know that I am a huge fanatic for Disney chicken tenders. And on Disney Cruise Line, these chicken tenders are offered all day long on the pool deck for free. <laughs> for the first time in history, Royal Caribbean is now offering chicken tenders in the buffet that rivaled that of Disney Cruise Line. So I had to call out the chicken tenders here on the review, <laughs> but overall the buffet was pretty standard. I know a lot of people always oft, often ask about the buffet. It was pretty standard. Went in line with a lot of other cruise line buffets. The food was just fine there, but the chicken lender, tenders were one of the best things on the ship. That was some of the casual complimentary eats, if you will. Now let's talk about the specialty dining. These are the paid for options. We did have the pleasure of doing a few of these, but one we had a call out in particular was Celebration Table. We love this concept. This is truly for those that are coming on board a cruise to celebrate an event, a milestone, a lifetime achievement, if you will, and have a private venue to do so. You have multiple menus, we had Italian for our event. We had about, uh, I think, 10 to 12 people there at this private table. And the food was good. It was elevated from that of what's complimentary in the main dining room or in the buffet. But it isn't about the food in this space. It's really about having a private celebratory place to celebrate your lifetime achievements, whether it is a birthday or whether it is getting a divorce, whatever it may be, you can celebrate it together with friends or loved ones in this space. And we really appreciate this as it's not something that's found on all other ships. Let's chat about drinks and bar service. On Icon of the Seas, there are over 15 new bar menus with a variety of brand new bars to the Royal Caribbean fleet. We really, really enjoyed hopping around from bar to bar trying different drinks, using our Diamond Plus drinks to taste new creations and concoctions that Royal Caribbean has made. We have to call out two specific bars and drinks that we loved. One was at Lou's in Central Park. This was one of our favorite bars on board. There's live jazz music. The music was great. The environment was really nice and casual. And the Jazzy Saz is a delicious bourbon-based drink that if you are going on Icon of the Seas is a must-have. The second bar we have to call out is actually in Surfside, which is the family area, which I know is shocking to some, but this is supposed to be a mommy and me or daddy and me bar. And what that means is you have alcoholic drinks, but you also have non-alcoholic drinks for the kids that come in these fun little pouches like those that you had growing up. The actual drink that we loved was the Slice of Life. Highly recommend going and grabbing this alcoholic cocktail, but there are tons of non-alcoholic options as well. What we did for everyone that's going on Icon of the Seas is prepared an actual challenge. A drinking challenge, if you will. And this is a bar crawl across all of the new bars that is on board Icon of the Sea. You can drink around Icon. Go to our Facebook page. You can find it, JJ Cruz, searching on Facebook. And you can find our Icon of the Seas challenge. Let's chat a little bit about entertainment. The entertainment on Icon of the Seas is next level. And it had to be a part of our good list. If we had a great or exceptional list, entertainment would be on that list. We got to see The Wizard of Oz, the ice skating show, as well as most of the aqua show. And all three shows were mind-blowingly good. I think when asking the question, is the price worth it for Icon of the Seas? One of the answers is yes, because of the entertainment. Wizard of Oz alone would be a Broadway-style show that you would probably pay between $100 and $150 per seat to see. So when you think about a family of four or six going to Broadway to see a show like that, that is a huge money saver right there. That That's a part of this vacation. And that's only for Wizard of Oz. I say the seats would say about the same amount of value for the ice skating show as well as the aqua show as well. So when you come on board Icon of the Seas, be ready for the entertainment. Don't miss the entertainment because you will be so sad you did. Along with these incredible shows that are meant for everyone comes activities and an additional show for the little ones. There's a host and an MC for the smaller, younger audiences and that is Admiral Awesome. 
Admiral Awesome will take your kids for bedtime stories before bed, also through daytime activities and events and Surfside, and then leads an entire ice show full of storytime characters like Humpty Dumpty and even that of Rapunzel on ice. It is such a wonderful thing for families to enjoy and kids of all ages really do love the activities and the events on board Icon of the Seas. We also have to talk about the live music on board because there was live music everywhere. It seemed like sometimes at all times. You had Schooner Bar, a brand new Dueling Pianos Bar, the Boleros Bar with Latin music, the Music Hall where they had a rock concert, Central Park had Luz, which was jazz. If you love live music, you will love Icon of the Seas. I think for us, it was the most diverse live music we have ever seen on a cruise ship since stepping off of Holland America's Music Walk. Along with everything we just mentioned above comes the crew. And the crew were incredible. The service around the ship was impeccable. So you do not have to worry a bit about having that poor service that can come sometimes with a brand new ship. That was the good. Now let's move on to the bad. And as a reminder, after the bad, we are going to talk about the one ugly that we experienced mm. while we were on board this ship. And also, just to let you know, while we are calling these bad, these are more things that you need to know or things that you have to know before stepping on board Icon of the Seas. Just like with the good, we have to start with the staterooms. And there was one really bad that was in our first impressions, was in our stateroom review, but we have to call it out here as well. And that's the baskets. There are baskets instead of regular cubbies or drawers in the staterooms under the closet space. And they clunked, they clanked, they were not functional. We absolutely hated these basket situations. We got a number of comments about these baskets on our video. We do understand some people like them. For us, we did not find them functional and we would much rather have drawers or just have the baskets removed just to have a couple of extra shelves. Another thing that we didn't really like was the lack of wall art. One thing we loved with Oasis class ships was the fact that there was such cool and unique art everywhere. Now we know that there is a lot of sculptures. There are a lot of these brass or metal sculptures that pop out everywhere. There are divers outside that are high diving from different decks. But when it comes to the walls, a lot of times they were really bare. There really wasn't much, especially in the corridors with the stairs. We didn't ever see anything that really jumped out at us or was really cool. We saw some cool things like that on Symphony of the Seas, Anthem of the Seas, and other Royal Caribbean ships. Now, I know, I know, that might be being really, really picky, but it's just something that we look for and we enjoy when we go on board a cruise ship. When it comes to across the ship, we know that this is a new design for a ship, and they're going to learn about problems. One of those problems is the day music in the pool bleeding into Central Park. Central Park is a getaway destination where you're supposed to relax, be able to go enjoy a coffee, enjoy the beautiful scenery that has a bunch of live vegetation around you without really hearing much more than maybe some soft music. Unfortunately, during the day, it's not that. The pool band, whenever they're active and live, is loud and in charge when it is in the Central Park area. That wasn't the only area where, you know, one neighborhood of music bleeded into another. The Promenade also had this issue. The Promenade is full of different music venues like Boleros and Schooner Bar. And sometimes when those two venues were playing music at the same time, you could hear the different styles of music clash together and it wasn't good and it wasn't cool. There was one night in particular that I was in the pub and I could hear piano music coming from across the way and the guitarist was having a hard time kind of singing with that piano music. So this may just be a scheduling issue. They might just be able to need to move some things around so that doesn't happen. But we did notice a lot of clashing music because there was so much music throughout the ship. Late at night, whenever there is a band going on live in the music hall, which is on the same deck as the casino, one deck below the promenade, well, you feel when the band is live. And that is because in Sorrento's upstairs, the bass is real. And you can feel every single pump of bass through that stereo system in Sorrento's. And it was something that luckily you don't have to live in Sorrento's, 
But when you did go there, you noticed that you really didn't get much of a comfortable feel late at night while there was live music playing. A practical takeaway here is that there are some staterooms around the music hall, and those might be staterooms that you would want to avoid because the music hall music is very, very loud. That's not the only area where there was loud music. If you are someone that is sensitive to loud music, some of the shows, specifically the Aquadome show, did also have extremely loud music. It's not something that we are that sensitive to, but it was actually something that was loud enough to where we noticed that. A lot of times it comes with live music, like the pool band we talked about earlier, or the DJ and hideaway. But for one specific show, it was definitely the Aqua show. We only saw one of two Aqua shows. I know another one's coming later. We aren't sure on if the second one, I think it's Mermaids vs. Pirates. That show may not be as loud, but just be careful if you are someone that's sensitive to loud music. Let's talk about Aquadome herself and some of the issues that Aquadome has. Overall, beautiful venue, but there are a few issues. One of them is the seats. Now, this may be just be a preference thing for some, but the seats are all bench style without backs, unless you sit in the very back row. This is something that is not very comfortable to sit on for about 45 minutes, which is the length of the Aquadome shows. If you have a problem with that, we'd recommend getting there super, super early to either get in the very back row or sit in some of the additional seating that is up and around the Aquanome. We don't understand why they put super uncomfortable seats in a space like this. And the Aquadome itself does seem to seat a few less people than the Oasis class ship. We could be wrong on this, but it did seem to pack up way quicker. And one thing to note is you do need to get there early to make sure you get a seat. Not just a seat with the back, but a seat in general. We saw multiple shows where people came like 10, 20 minutes beforehand and did not get a seat with their family or a seat at all. So make sure you go early enough to ensure you have your preferred seat or a seat in general for the Aqua Show. Another venue that this is very true is Absolute Zero, the ice skating venue. This is an area that packs up so quick. It is a ticketed event. However, we noticed that if when we came really late or close to showtime, we would not be able to get seats together. This also goes for unticketed events like Quest. Quest and some other events happen in Absolute Zero. And if you get there even 10, 15 minutes beforehand, you will not get a seat. We went 20 minutes before the quest happened and we had to stay in the back up against a wall because all the seats were taken. So note this, make sure you go early if you want to go to some of these events. The next point is for those that may be a little bit photosensitive or sensitive to light. Both the Aquadome and the ice skating show had a lot of lights. Not just a lot of lights, but no seats where the lights don't hit your face. A lot of times people like to go into a balcony for this reason, because they know that the lights aren't meant to come up to the balcony, they'll stay more in the orchestra. Well, that's not an option when it comes to the Aquadome or Absolute Zero. So if you are sensitive to light, make sure that you sit either far enough back or just don't go to these shows. Maybe ask a friend that knows of your sensitivity before if they can go and check it out for you just to make sure that it's right for you. I would hate for anyone to be triggered in any way because of the lights in these shows. Overall, we really loved all of our food and dining experiences on board Icon of the Seas, but there were two venues that after everything was said and done, we just don't think need to be on this ship. The one is base camp. And if it were to stay, we think that it should be free. The food and the costs really just were not worth it. And right around the corner from base camp is deserted, which is the new milkshake bar. And that we believe is way overpriced. We came across so many people that had two milkshakes from deserted ending in a total of over $40. I have never paid $20 for a milkshake in my life, but if I were ever to pay that price, I would hope there'd be gold nuggets involved. <laughs> On top of this, Base Camp did have some good entrees, so it's not the food that's the problem, it's more the price. We wanna make sure that's clear. That's why I want it to be complimentary or have more complimentary options and just a few add-ons. For example, if you do go there, we really love the cheese curds, but $6 for cheese curds should be included or maybe just a dollar or two. That was our bad. Thankfully, the good definitely outweighs the bad here, but there was one thing that we found on board Icon of the Seas that was a huge waste of our money. We felt like we just 
took our money and threw it away. Yes, our ugly is the day bed in hideaway. One day we just decided to splurge a hideaway day bed in the water overlooking the aft views, opened up and we said, let's do it. This was a day at port. And so we were working and we thought might as well just work from this day bed all day. Well, once we got there, we paid our $300 to get there. We saw that we had a bottle of champagne two complimentary glasses that you could buy, which were, I think, $10 if you just wanted to buy them all a cart. And that was pretty much it. We had some extra towels in there, but those are obviously free. And when we got to the day bed, we noticed quickly all of the issues. The biggest issue was that these are obviously in the water and everyone around was not necessarily very respectful of the space. People kept putting their glasses up on our bed. People kept hanging out on our bed, putting their arms on the bed. And no one was really there to kind of police or tell them not to do this. Also, that's just kind of awkward in general for... I think someone to do, but then someone to also try to correct somebody else. So we really didn't like that. The other thing that we didn't love, this was the only time the entire 10 nights that we had an issue with service. For $300, you should have a dedicated server. And that was a port day. It's actually more expensive if you do it at sea. Unfortunately, there was no dedicated server for the day beds. You have the same server as everyone else. On top of this, there were issues with the day bed itself. For example, there was only a small hump to lay your head on, but there was no back. So when you were actually laying down, you had to lay down fully. You could not lay up and look at the views without hurting your back or your neck or both. On top of this, there were no umbrellas. There was no shade. It was direct sunlight the entire time. And we noticed a few other people on the other two day beds definitely got roasted. In general, we would say do not book the daybeds in the water. We heard the daybeds across the way, not in the water, did actually have backs that lifted up so you could sit and enjoy and watch the views. We think that that would probably be a better way to spend your money. But the good news here is this is something you don't have to do at all. And as a matter of fact, it is something that we would not recommend. No, save your money. Make sure you make the right financial choices for your vacation and make sure you budget appropriately for other opportunities, like maybe especially dining instead of that of a day bed that is not gonna be comfortable or worth your money. And I can already see it here in the comments and I already know what people are gonna think and say, really JJ Cruz, that was your ugly? <laughs> yes, it was, because it was something that we decided to spend extra money on that we didn't like. The great news is, everything else that was free complimentary included in your cruise fare was nowhere near ugly and worth every single penny of the cruise that we spent well i think you just answered it but <laughs> would we sail on icon of the seas again absolutely yes it is also well worth the money of course we know there's a lot of people out there that they can only vacation once or twice a year if you are saving your money for that one vacation a year and it's only seven nights, that's how much time you have off, this is perfect for you. You should use your money towards Icon of the Seas. Now, if you're someone who likes to vacation all the time and you have to spread out your wealth, we understand why you might think other options might be suitable. But one day, this ship will probably go down in price and then you should definitely sail on her as well. This is probably another video for another time, but... If you at home do a direct comparison of a very famous family vacation that you could take in Florida to a number of different places, but let's just say to a famous amusement park for four people for a week, and you compare it to the price of four people on a cruise ship like Icon of the Seas, you're going to find that Icon of the Seas is actually a fantastic value. So if you are someone that's looking to buy into this incredible family experience, please contact us. We are both travel agents. Yes, go to jjcruise.com, fill out the booking form, and we'll be happy to book you on your upcoming Royal Caribbean cruise and hopefully on Icon of the Seas because we know you're going to love it. Well, that was a lot. That was the good, bad, and ugly of Icon of the Seas. As always, thank you so much for watching. Let us know in the comments below. What do you think? Is this a cruise ship for you? Is this a cruise ship that you would ever find yourself sailing on? We answered all the questions you probably had. And so now it's time and up for you. Let us know in the comments below. Is this of interest to you? And until next time, 
See ya.